What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an extension that can allow you to quickly bend objects inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so before we get started, quick reminder that the SketchUp Essentials course is currently on sale through the end of the day tomorrow. So if you're looking for a course that's gonna give you um, both comprehensive SketchUp training, as well as an area to get actual help if you get stuck on anything, make sure you check out that course. That course is gonna come with the training area, as well as my live calls and my community forum so that you can call in and we can talk about SketchUp without you having to worry about getting stuck on any of the material. That's also gonna come with access to the complete SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, as well as the Twin Motion Essentials course, which is gonna teach you how to create realistic renderings inside of Twin Motion. So if you wanna check those out, make sure you go to the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so TrueBend is an extension for SketchUp that you can download from the SketchUp extension warehouse. And so it's probably one of two extensions that I really recommend for bending things, the other being Fredo Scale from um, Fredo 6. But um, you can download TrueBend for free through the SketchUp extension warehouse. And so if we go in and take a look at this, this is an extension from TomTom. You can just download and install it from directly inside of SketchUp in the extension warehouse. But the way that this tool is going to work is you're gonna be able to take a model like this one, and then you can activate it just by clicking on it with that model selected, and you can bend the object. And this is gonna allow you to bend an object anywhere from zero degrees to 360 degrees. And so the 360 degrees kind of is what makes this one unique to me. Um, this is the only one I know of that's gonna allow you to bend things that far. And so all you have to do is just activate the tool, and then you're just gonna pick the handle and drag, or you can type in a value, right? So if I typed in 180 degrees, for example, I could bend this object to 180 degrees. Now, one thing I do recommend when you're using a tool like this is always make a copy of the object that you're using, just in case you need that base geometry again. But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna type in a value of 180 degrees, hit the enter key, and that's going to allow us to easily bend that object along this radius. And so there's interesting applications in here as well for duplicating objects, right? So if I use the rotate tool in copy mode, create a copy right here, and then move this together, because this bends objects along a true 180 degrees, right here they match up really nice in the middle, meaning you can use this to create objects like this that are going to um, match up and be kind of continuous. Now when you're doing this, make sure that you save before you run this tool. But one of the cool things about this is you can also change the direction that it bends. So this bends based on the component axes, right? So if I double click in here, I can see that the component axes are set so that the red direction is facing this way, the green direction is facing this way. And this is going to bend that object along that red direction, meaning this is the plane along which this is going to be bent. So I can do the same thing here, right? I could come in here and I can type in like 135 degrees, hit the enter key, and this is gonna do a really good job of bending it that way. Okay, so you can also take these objects and change the direction that they bend, right? So say I didn't want to make this a horizontal bend, say I wanted it to be vertical, I can definitely do that. Now, best as I can tell, there's two things that you need to pay attention to here. Um, so I know that this is driven off of your component axes, right? So your red axis is going to drive the direction that the object, or the, uh, the, the direction along which objects are bent. And then the green axis seems to be the other axis that affects the direction that things bend. So if I take this object, for example, and I come in here, like right now, if I activate true bend, it's just gonna bend it in this direction, right? Kind of like it did before. But if I come in here and I adjust the axis location like this, so if I come in here and I make the red axis go this way, and the green axis go this way using the axis tool. And notice how I'm changing the object axis, not the global axis. Well, now that's going to change the direction that this bends. Now, the one thing that's a little bit weird to me, and um, I don't think that I'm doing this wrong, but I might be, um, this does still seem to be affected by the global axes as well, right? So if I come in here right now, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'll make a copy. But if I come in here right now and I click on this and I run true bend, notice how it does bend the object, but it's doing it in kind of a funky 
direction. I think that that is driven by the global axis direction, but I'm not 100% sure. Like if I take this object, right, and I rotate it so that my object axis direction now aligns with my global axis direction like this, I can come in here and I can adjust my object and it's going to bend just fine. Right, so I can use this in order to bend my object by that or in that other direction like this, but the global axes seem to affect that still. And so, I mean, it's really easy to take that object and align it with the axes like that. It's just that you are having to come in here and adjust both the object axes and the global axes in order to get that to work. And so that's not especially hard to do. Just be aware that I thought the component axes just totally drove that direction, but as of right now, it seems like um, the global axes direction is kind of affecting that as well. So just be aware that you're probably going to want to take your object and just kind of align it um, with the overall axes before you start changing things inside of your SketchUp model um, when you start changing the direction of your bends, but you can definitely do it. All right, so if you want to learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course. I'll link to that on this page. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think about TrueBend. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.